Luminar said on Thursday, Mercedes-Benz will use its laser sensors in a next generation auto platform to enable certain semi-autonomous driving features. The luxury automaker is also taking an unspecified minority stake in Luminar. Shares finish Thursday session up 12%. With us now is Luminar's founder and CEO, Austin Russell. Austin, good to uh, see you as always. I'm, I imagine it's a pretty big week for you. Uh, so for the, for the tech newbies out there uh, that are still trying to wrap their hands around autonomous, how will these sensors be used in Mercedes cars? Yep, so the, the whole point of, uh, of what we're doing with Mercedes and the objective is, is to be able to enable the integration of this kind of LiDAR technology on the vehicles to see and understand um, the world around them accurately and precisely in 3D to give the, the cars a better understanding and uh, be able to have uh, even better and safer assisted and autonomous driving features is, is the objective. So um, that's what we've really been uh, working deeply with them on uh, to be able to enable that kind of capability. Um, but there, there's a lot that goes into it. Uh, and you know, the, the part of the significance of this though is that the intent is, is actually for consumer vehicles as opposed to say, you know, the robo taxi test vehicles and other types of things that are out there as it stands today. So you know, this is really a critical moment in the industry where you can start to see a transition from R&D actually going into series production. And, you know, with Mercedes here at the table, it's, um, you know, couldn't think of a better brand that stands for, you know, safety, luxury, and everything else that goes into it kind of at the, at the pinnacle of the automotive industry. So it's awesome to be uh, kicking this off full steam ahead. Yeah, Austin, it's Julie here. We've been following your journey, obviously, pretty closely along different steps of the way here. Um, and so what's when are people going to be able to potentially have access to a Mercedes with this technology? And what kinds of things are you having to do to adapt it differently than some of your uh, previously signed partnerships? Yep. So, uh, so a couple things on the front. One, uh, they, they aren't disclosing this any kind of specific timelines or planned vehicles for it. And well, in large part, because they actually haven't even announced the specific vehicles themselves, you know, or, or what, it, what it may be there. So when it comes down to it, uh, the, the, the goal of this is to get this integrated in the next gen platform that they have. So that's ultimately something that can, um, uh, that can support different kinds of vehicle models and architectures and everything for for, uh, for the production platform. So that's what's going on at this point in time. Um, but you know, you can expect it as part of the objective in the not too distant future when it comes down to that. Uh, for, in terms of the fundamental technology that's going into this, it's the same core uh, Luminar uh, LiDAR technology and Iris technology uh, that we've had. Um, obviously, there's a lot of deep integration work and uh, you know, we're, all, we're not stopping. We're continuing to improve the performance and capabilities of the device and that, that absolutely applies to Mercedes as well. Um, but that, that part of the, uh, the underlying principle here is that um, this is the same core technology that we're enabling across the board with our partners, um, you know, from Volvo to SAIC to, well, actually even Dymo Trucks in addition to uh, uh, Mercedes and of course the tech partners like uh, Mobileye and uh, NVIDIA as well along the way. So it's, uh, there's, there's a lot of leverage. Austin, you've signed a lot of deals. I think we've talked to you pretty much whenever you have announced a new deal. When do you start producing uh, your products? Yep, so uh, everything is leading up to big uh, start of production for series production at the at the end of this year. I mean, we, we've obviously been producing these uh, products and should, for sake of clarity, uh, gone through a number of iterations of products, but these are largely for uses in, in development um, use cases at this stage. But Iris is really the first time where you're actually seeing this go out into series production and having these capabilities out on real roads in consumer vehicles. So this is a first really for, for us and for the industry in many ways. And as a result, that that uh, Iris technology is basically our, our start of production for that is uh, targeted at the end of the year. So we're moving full steam ahead to that, and then can really start to see the ramp up um, over, over the the subsequent years there um, to to ultimately see this as a vision of mainstream adopted technology um, as standardized throughout the industry by the end of the decade. I, I would be surprised if most major automakers didn't have this adopted on board um, their, their consumer vehicles by that time, considering just the dramatic safety benefits and not to mention the autonomous capabilities that, that you have to have. But those are key drivers for making this a reality. Do you think investors are, are they still misunderstand what you're doing, Austin? Are you more of a auto safety play than this notion that over the next five years, every car on the road will won't require hands on the wheels. Yeah, I, I would actually say, uh, and one is, yes, I think there's no question that we're, we're not 
fully or properly understood. Um, and I, I'd say, I'd say certainly by equity markets, at least, um, that's part of why we did a massive buyback, you know, recently as well, to be able to raise capital to do that, just doubling down on ourselves. You know, we think that there's a huge opportunity and frankly, hugely undervalued at this point, you know, compared to where we are and everything that we're winning and the uh, pure opportunity that we're delivering. I mean, if you do this right, you know, that's, that's the trillion dollar opportunity. And we've been, uh, we, we've been on a massive win streak that we don't expect to ultimately stop anytime soon when it comes down to it. So, um, so yeah, it's a, there, there, there's a lot ahead, but uh, you know, I, I, I'd say in terms of what type of company we are, yeah, there's, there's no question. It's, it's, it's involving safety. It's involving this, but I, I'd say we're, we're a new type and new breed of automotive technology company. That's really taking the industry by storm. And when it comes to autonomous capabilities, we are a ton of, we are an autonomous company in many ways, but not in the same way of that people traditionally think about it, like a Waymo cruise, Argo, these robo taxi companies, um, you know, that are valued well into the, into the tens of billions uh, in these cases, but totally doing a totally different, thing of trying to be able to replace the driver altogether, you know, take it out of the seat and uh, have you uh, have a robo taxi pick you up and drop you off, um, you know, in an urban area and environment. Our, our goal is get on to leverage the existing multi-trillion a year production passenger vehicle industry, get this into the hands of consumers, get these next generation safety capabilities and autonomous capabilities out into the real world as, as quickly as possible and have it happen really this decade, not next decade when it when it comes down to it. And that, that that's just tremendous leverage. And how you can build an incredibly valuable business. And, and to your point, um, Austin, there's a lot of players in this, even if they're playing in sort of different aspects of it, right? What do you, and I, I know this is sort of a long-term question, but what do you see as your market share here? Like, do you see there being a dominant player and it's Luminar, or do you see some sort of high double-digit market share participants here by the time we get to the end of the decade? Yeah, I, I think, uh, well, uh, I, th I think it, the, the data goes to show and uh, the decisions in the industry go to show that and, and the, uh, from both a technical business and financial standpoint that all signs point to Luminar when it comes down to that. Um, but that said, the reality is, is that um, I, I think, well, well, of course, I think we'll have a dominant uh, or, or the dominant market uh, share position in more than everyone else combined, just as, you know, I mean, from like, for example, a series production standpoint and getting designed into these vehicles and everything, you know, that's already, um, you know, more than everyone else combined at this stage for this type of application capability. Um, but when it comes down to it, I think the significance is uh, less about like market share and like what the slice of the pie is, so to say, but rather how big you can actually make the pie in the first place. And that's, it's a completely different game because you take a look at it, uh, you know, and, and look at kind of some of the, like, like the economics behind it. Um, it, it only takes about, you know, I think it's a buyer model was like three or 4% market penetration uh, to be able to, to build a, in our case, like 5 billion revenue, two and a half billion EBITDA business with a 60 billion forward looking order book and massive growth there. So, you know, you take a look at it and it's like, wow, okay, it, it really only takes a very small level of market penetration to be able to do that. So that's what it's all about. It's just, it's about market adoption, market penetration more than uh, a give or take from anyone. That said, oh, we've certainly been uh, leading the race and, and um, uh, by, by a long shot when it comes to uh, market penetration and adoption for series production. And that gives you just an, an incredibly sustaining advantage as you reach economies of scale and drive forward this product uh, into the industry to make all of this happen. So um, a lot ahead, but... Uh, but th this is the ultimate goal of how you, you know, 10x, 100x the business. Austin, uh, as a founder of the company, what was behind your decision to, to sign off on giving Mercedes a, a stake in Luminar? Um, yep. So, so this is really part of the broader holistic deal, you know, with Mercedes as their, um, uh, which has an equity component, which shares are being provided, you know, in, in context and consideration of certain services uh, and data that's being provided to us as, as part of this. Um, but when it comes down to it, uh, I, I would say that in connection with that, there's also a, a data component where uh, they're able to provide uh, from series production vehicles subject to consumer consent and applicable law, um, that back from the cars, which ends up enabling us to continuously improve the product, quality, safety, autonomous capabilities, and all that that goes into it. But um, more than anything, it's aligning interests and uh, you know, get, getting great people involved as as um, as part of our business from um, from both a, a technical standpoint, business standpoint, and financial standpoint. So um, great stuff all around, and uh, continuing to move full speed ahead. I'd say the the the, the real thing though, and the, obviously the the real opportunity here that's you know the, the the game changer is is seeing this technology through onto the consumer vehicles, and and that's something that's 
um, you know, orders of magnitude more, more meaningful in terms of opportunity than, you know, say, uh, say any stake or any other aspect of this. So that's what we're, we're uh, fully uh, focused on from an execution standpoint. Always fun getting some time with you. Luminar founder and CEO, Austin Russell. We'll talk to you soon.